I'm gonna tell you about an amazing being that was taken from her home in the Pacific Northwest. She was then taken to Miami, Florida, and has been living her life away from her family, in isolation, in captivity. She's just like you and I. She's self-aware, she's conscious. She has the ability to think about her emotional state, her state of being with herself, with her family, and her neurology shows us that she can think about something greater than community. I'm talking about Lolita. She's an orca that was taken nearly 50 years ago from the Pacific Northwest, and she has been in captivity for that long away from her family. In my early 20s, I started working for other broadcasters like National Geographic and Discovery, and, and I had the honor to be in the kingdom of the dolphins and in the company of whales. And what I've learned over these years is something that I want to share in story and, and uh, hopefully maybe with some humor today. I'm not the voice of the whales because they sing. We just have to listen. We find nature in the sounds of a bird singing. We find nature in the pause. I've had the honor to be able to find nature in myself through the call of a humpback whale or of the smile of a dog or of the laughter of children. We are all of these things. And as we explore what these wrongs are, they can be very insurmountable. Climate change, global warming, sea level rise, the pollution of our sacred waters, the pollution of ourselves. How do we right these wrongs of the crimes against nature that we've done over so many years? And many of the things that I've learned over the last 25 years working with marine mammals, dolphins and whales, is that there's wisdom there. And the wisdom comes in the most simplest of forms. The message of the whales is something that is all around us. It's actually right now in the sound of a bird song. If you listen, we need to listen. On the different points, we have to find some accountability. We have to know what our decisions are that can make a difference. The world is in a global pause with this pandemic, and many of us have been reflecting on what is it within our lives that we can change. And sometimes it can be full of indecision, of, fr of fear, and maybe even going into apathy. I'm gonna share something with you. It's a little vulnerable, maybe a little surprising, but I used to be terrified of the water. The movie Jaws came out, and as remarkable of a film that is, and the author, Peter Benchley, and the filmmaker, Steven Spielberg, I was a seven-year-old kid and it scared me out of the water. I was so terrified of sharks that my big brother had me afraid of pool sharks. Those are the invisible ones that live in the deep end of the pool, of course. But what I did, instead of living in that fear, is that I learned as much as I could about the oceans. I learned about dolphins and how they are kind of the protectors against sharks. I found myself years later in a place on the other side of the world in Rangiroa, French Polynesia. And there I was doing a behind the scenes shot for, uh, for a discovery film. And it was my first time in the water with sharks. And what happened with me is that I had to do a surrender. I had a choice. I could either have my worst nightmares come to fruition and be torn to shreds as Hollywood shows, or something else, something of the remarkable, the unknown. At the count of three, I dove back, went down to the depth, was breathing, because when you're on scuba, you have to be a conscious breather. But as I looked around, I saw how magnificent they were. My fear was immediately back to curiosity. Be curious. We should never lose our curiosity because we feel that we have failed or that we have too many big problems in the world. The problems that we're facing of climate change and global warming and sea level rise and how we are polluting beautiful sacred waters, we have solutions within us and we can join with our communities to make a difference. Many people say that we're past the tipping point and that it's more about readiness rather than an action to find a solution. 
There are so many issues and so many entities out doing the wrong thing. We do the wrong thing too. So let's stop with the blame game and let's start with more solutions. We need to start doing something about it. I'm gonna share with you another story. Um, I've been spending many years out uh, filming and communing with a group of wild dolphins. And it's been a remarkable experience. It changed my life and shifted my life from where I was going to where I am now. And it's also reflective of what's happening with us. Remember earlier I was telling you about how dolphins are self-aware. They're highly intelligent. Even though we can't even measure our own human intelligence, we know that neurologically, biologically, they use more of their brain, their larger brains. In this self-awareness, they have the same aspects of us, and yes, they have conflict. But with their conflict, they have solutions. So we need to look at these messages of the wild, of the wild places, the kingdoms of the dolphins, and see that through their conflict, they find solutions. The dolphins are leaving their home grounds because of ocean acidification, the collapse of their own food source. They're moving out of their home. This is parallel to what's happening with us. We're gonna be moving out of our homes, moving out of our countries. We already have places like the Maldives that sea level rise is happening and we have climate change refugees. The dolphins aren't a canary in the coal mine. They're happening now. With what happens with them happens with us. Let's see how we can truly be more proactive. I'm not asking you or myself to change the world, just change ourselves. And from that, we can build community. We can look at what's gonna happen in five years, 10 years, and we will see that world that we have imagined where we're thriving. I may be a little bit of a romantic when it comes to these things, and I will not apologize for it because there is great loss and that's what's at risk. If we don't do these things and change things and set a goal for the next 10 years, we're not gonna hear this. We'll be listening, but there won't be a song. So how do we go into a sense of hope? How do we go into that world in which we want to all collectively visualize where we're thriving? But I want to visualize a world in which we are thriving, that we are further connected, that we are using our skill sets and our own intelligence to raise life as it's intended to work in concert with. But for me personally, I'm gonna show that accountability through my actions, through that pause, and through the lessons and messages of the whales and of nature. Not just visualizing that world in which we can thrive and be in. These are solutions that are very easy. Be accountable, be the change. <laughs>